Hello. So, following on from my last video where I demonstrated the way that I paint my Imperial Guard, I thought I'd just carry on uh, with my Imperial Guard division and move on to the artillery. So, today's video is going to be about looking at painting an Imperial Guard 12 pounder. So, here we have one I've already completed. This is from Warlord Games. And again, as last time, all I'm going to be doing is painting these to a table ready standard and then putting them on the tabletop. So I'll paint the cannon and I'll paint the crew and then I'll show you how I, I base them. And we'll go from there. So that's hopefully what this one is going to end up looking like. Although the one I've got isn't in the firing position, they're laying it. You can see that I've already primed the cannon black. Any black will do. And for the actual crew members, I'm following the same method that I used in my last video for painting the grenadiers. And those have been undercoated blue and uh, with various shades. And they're going to be painted in exactly the same method with just one exception, which I'll, um, I'll point out in the video. But I won't actually go through the process of painting these. I'll just get these ready. We're going to focus on the cannon and on the basing. So I'll get everything set up and we'll get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna paint on the cannon to get it ready is gonna be the woodwork um, on the actual body of the cannon. Now, all of the cannons that I've seen anyway for the French army have a sort of a green finish on the wood. So I am just gonna use a dark green and I'm using Luftwaffe green from Vallejo. And what we'll do, we're going to base coat this over the whole of the model of the wooden parts, even the, the, the metallic bits. And uh, we will then be shading it and then working it up um, with a few dry brushes. So I've watered this down a little bit just to make it flow better. And we are just going to paint that onto the body. Some motorbikes going past tonight. Okay, once all that is dry, I'm now going to paint the base coat on the cannon itself. And on, for that, I'm going to be using Retributor armor from Games Workshop. And I just want to keep this on the cannon itself and this will again be shaded later and then we'll dry brush it and get a bit of wear on the cannon okay next I'm going to use Vallejo game color gunmetal and I'm going to paint this along all of the fittings and the metal plates that are all parts of the chassis of the cannon. Uh, I'm going to do it on the coverings uh, on the wheels and just try and get all these little fittings. And I'm going to try and be as neat as possible here. That's not always a success. Right, that's all the base coats for the cannon done. Now we're going to move on to the next step, which will be a shade, and that's going to be Citadel Null Oil, mixed 50-50 with water. And this shade is gonna be over everything except the actual cannon. So just mix all that on there. Now that that's dry, I'm now going to put an Agrax Earthshade from Citadel over the cannon. Okay, the washes are all dry now. And now I'm going to just do a dry brush on the green areas. And for that, I've created a slight highlight using the base colour, which was Luftwaffe Green mixed with a slightly lighter green, in this case intermediate green. 
And I'm very simply just going to come along now and I'm just going to run this half dry brush in, half stippling really, onto these areas um, just to create some highlights. You want to make sure that the washes are completely dry because otherwise this could go very wrong. And I just put them in these areas here. Now I'm just going to do a very light dry brush of uh, Dark Stars Molten Metals Classic Gold just across the top of the cannon. And while I'm doing the dry brushing I'm now just going to dry brush some pure black just on the end of the cannon just to represent the build up of dirt and gunpowder and from all that repeated firing at the allied lines. Okay now I'm just going to do the final part of the cannon and I'm just going to use a brighter silver colour in this case I'm using uh, chrome from the air model range and I'm just going to pick out some highlights here on those parts of the metal work. I have seen some really really great paint jobs where there's been a lot of weathering and rust put onto cannons and I think those look really good but for my cannons I like to keep keep them fairly clean. I'm of the feeling that to be fair that the soldiers who were firing these cannons would probably have been in far worse condition than the cannon itself and certainly the French with Napoleon wouldn't have let the cannons even have a tiny bit of rust on them, especially as his original artillery officer training and the love that he had for these for the, these cannons. So I'm not going to be adding anything like that. I will be weathering this and adding dirt, but I'm going to leave it rust free. And that's the cannon now done. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to finish the crew. I'm going to get those painted up the same way as I did the last lot of old guard um, that I did a video about. Um, and then we'll come back and have a look at how I assemble them on the base and do the basing. Okay, so I finished painting the crew and I've just dry fitted them at the minute onto this base but just to show you what I've done um, here we have one of the uh, crew members and you can see that I've just given a slightly lighter blue highlight to the uniform after painting it and for that I've used this colour which is magic blue from the game air range. Afterwards I still have just completed a complete dry brush using deck tan over everything just to give it that, that warm look that I like. Um, and then I'm just dry fitting them onto this base. I'm using a MDF base for my cannon and uh, we've got the guys laying it. So I'm gonna stick those on with super glue um, and then we'll get to the, the next step. Okay, so here you can see I've started putting the PVA glue onto the MDF base straight. I don't bother pre-painting my bases and I just slap it on. And then I'm going to be using the ground cover mix, you can just see in the background there, straight onto this. Uh, if you're interested in the ground cover mix that I use, I've done another video where I talk about basing the War of the Roses project I'm currently working on, and I go into a little bit more detail there, but it's basically based off a mix um, that I got after watching one of the Luke APS videos. So I'm just going to put the whole thing on here, and then we're going to dip it into the ground cover. Okay, there we are, and it's ready to be dipped. Uh, I have got a little bit on parts of the cannon, but that doesn't bother me too much because we're gonna get some mud onto it. So I just put that into there. We're gonna be putting some wet mud on the wheels to represent the really boggy ground at Waterloo. As Napoleon had to wait to bring his cannons up before he could begin bombarding the Allied lines because the ground was so wet. Even though he waited until it was dry, there still would be a lot of caked on mud. So I dip that in. I leave it heaped up 
on there so that the glue can it can soak up the glue and then we just leave him to dry and we'll see where he is okay so now the ground mix is completely dry and as you can see that's given us very nice coverage over most parts of the model there are a couple of places i can see now where i've missed it uh, like in between uh, this guy's legs here but we're going to put some flock onto that so what i'm going to do now is just paint some pva glue onto the base and then we're going to put some flock onto that and i'm going to use uh, the army painter battlefield mix step grass after we've done that we'll then be adding uh, some of this vallejo thick mud acrylic paste to it now to make it look boggy and particularly unpleasant, it's important that the grass goes down first because then when you put the mud mix on, it will adhere to the grass and it will look like things have been kicked up and you can smear some nice ruts and other effects in. And to make it look like the cannon has been firing again and again, I'm gonna focus putting the static grass around the edges, this one right here, near the troopers, and sort of away from the wheels. I'm going to keep it muddy underneath it to show that it's constantly been trodden over and the wheels are running backwards and forwards over it. Okay, the static grass is now dried and I'm now going to add the Vallejo thick mud effect onto the base and try and create some furrows uh, in the ground where the wheels are. So all I do for this is I just get some of this on my brush, an old brush because it will slow right up about that much and then i just put it on the base where i want to start creating the boggy ground so i'm going to start by doing it around the wheels and when i put some of it on i now just spread it out and it, so it doesn't matter if it gets on the feet you're going to have that like quite cool weathered effect you can even just push some up onto the lower parts of their legs like that so i'm going to keep doing that now the whole way around the model and what you can also do is if you're working at the front of the cannon like this, you can pop a bit of my den and just drag it up and over. And what you'll get is a nice effect on the wheels like that. And the model is now finished. So the mud has dried, it dries fairly quickly. And as you can see, we've got some nice build up around the wheels. So it really looks like they're trying to push it out of the dirt. And as you can see, when I put the mud under the cannon, some of it clings to the bottom of it. It really gives the impression that it has been hauled through the mud. And on this side as well. And then you can see here where I flicked the pieces of mud around the wheel. It really just gives it a nice effect. And at the back here what I achieved this furrow by basically twisting the brush in place as it was going through and you get these nice furrows so they could either just represent where the wheels have gone or where there's been cannonballs have landed I have played around with some other effects on other bases created the furrow and then dropped a, a small ball bearing there to represent the cannonball that's basically just smashed into the mud but with that, the base is finished. All I did was I just used a earth colored brown to paint the rim and he is done. And he can now take his place in the battery with the others. So I'll just get my other, other one and there we go. And they're ready to go. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. And again, if you have any questions or if you would like to know anything else, just drop me a comment or send me a message. Thank you.